we did the brush tool. The gradient tool is the same. I will, let's look at a different image just for the brush tool. Like this will be a nice one. We can work with the gradient tool. So it, here's, I have an image that's, it's got a really bright area and two dark areas. Okay, so an image like this, it's a hard image. It's hard to take a good exposure of this situation and get exposure value in both your really shadow areas and your highlight areas. So one of the things we're going to have to do in editing is try to balance out the exposure extremes. Um, you know, we can obviously do a certain amount by adjusting shadow, increasing our shadows here and decreasing our highlights to, to a degree, but um, we still may find that there's too much of a difference. So the localized adjustments is the way to start with that. The graduated filter I wanted to show you is basically like if you want to darken a whole sky, this is a great way to do that. Um, or this whole area over here would be very easy for me to increase the exposure of this. And so the way this works is like you click at the start and then you click um, a stopping point. And basically the, the area between the two lines is like the gradient, like how fuzzy or how much of a feather there is. The area to the right here in this sense or to the right of the green is is the full effect. It's totally on here. So my effect is based on this control settings here. So if I zero these out, then it'll actually just be like I didn't do anything. If I increase the exposure, you can see it's kind of getting brighter. And this is how much of a feather there is. So if I make this feather, if I make this almost no feather, then if I turn the overlay off, I'm going to make a really sharp edge line. Usually you don't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, especially not in this type of situation because it's really obvious where I've made my change. Um, so that's the reason for this control is that you can pull this out a bit and you can you can basically like fade it in. So now if I turn this off, you're not going to know that I made that adjustment over there. And that's the goal, right? When we're editing, we want to make these a change to make it look good, but not make it look obvious that we edited it. I guess I should go without saying, but... Um, and you, you can do all these things interdependent or one after another. It's not necessary that you do one thing in front of the other. So you can come and make this adjustment and then you can come back to the basic controls panel. Um, by the way, sometimes once you're in these, you're like, how do I get out of this? I'm in this gradient filter mode. Now we're, everything disappeared over here, you know, like, I don't see, where's the basics tab? It's all gone. If you just click on one of these, like the zoom tool or the hand tool, it's they're going to come back. It's just kind of the way it works. But now you may go in and make further changes. So I think you may decide, oh, well, now I'd actually like more contrast in there now that there's, now that's not so dark, that kind of thing. Also, note, you know, anything that's in these gradiated filters or some of you can make adjustments just to contrast of one particular person's face or one particular area. So there's a lot of controls here that are going to help you. The radial filter is the same exact idea. It just allows you to make a shape. Now, insert, I think this is like this is probably something that has the least um, it's the least intuitive to use, but there there are certain certainly situations where what you'd prefer to do is just have a cert be able to make a circle or make a circular impression but I haven't used as much of this this is more of the, one of the more recent features they've added but essentially it it works just like the brush tool and you can actually kind of go back and forth between the brush tool and this circular tool so you can kind of add to this selection but those are those tools now um, let's get back here the last tools to up at the top open preferences dialog that's nice for example if you're just tired of having to do something special to open JPEGs through camera raw you can you know you can say automatic you can come down here and say automatically open all supported JPEGs um, things like that 
um, just gives you some different options. I think I don't want to go over them right now, but there's different types of ways that you can save your ex, you know, your in information as XMP files or save it in a camera raw database, which hardly anybody does. But there are some specialized options. Then the last two are probably the most obvious things. They're just rotational tools. Rotate things 90 degrees. This is the same exact tool that's, that you will also find in Bridge. So usually if I'm in Bridge um, and you have a whole series of images that need to be rotated, you can select all the ones that you need to be have rotated. And then you can just come up and it's up here at the top of Bridge. And you can rotate all your image simultaneously or together. So it's, but it's, it works just like that. 